What is Prince Harry doing? What is this court case all about? I know he's hoping not to get to have to stand on uh, trial, as it were, but what's he doing? Yeah, I mean, it's very complicated. There are a number of legal battles Prince Harry is having with both the British press and the British government. But today is a <laughs> preliminary hearing um, into um, an article that the Mail on Sunday wrote about his battle with the Home Office over their decision not to allow him to pay for his own police protection when he's in the UK. So I'm just going to read the, uh, the headline of the article that the Mail wrote. So they said, exclusive, how Prince Harry tried to keep legal fights with government over police bodyguards a secret. Then, just minutes after the story broke, his PR machine tried to put a positive spin on the dispute. So what does that mean, you may be asking? Um, well, in July, a judge ruled that, um, in Harry's favour, that the article was defamatory because to a normal reader, the judge said, um, it would suggest that Harry was responsible for what his PR team put out about him. And the PR teams was trying to spin the fact that Prince Harry, from right from the start, was um, wanting, was had always been willing to pay for his own police protection or offered to pay for his police protection. Whereas legal documents actually show that's not the case. And he didn't actually make that offer until legal proceedings had started on the Home Office case. Are you with me so far? It's very complicated, isn't it? Um, so Associated Newspapers Limited, who owns the Mail on Sunday, they're contesting what Prince Harry is saying. They're saying that the article was honest opinion uh, and it didn't cause any serious harm to Prince Harry. So therefore, it's not defamatory. Um, Prince Harry is saying that he has always made, or his lawyers are saying he has always made uh, the offer to pay for his own police protection. He did that way back in January 2020. Um, and the Mail on Sunday is saying that's not the case because legal documents show that is not the case. So it's a very complicated legal thing that we've got going on this morning. It's the preliminary hearing today. At the same time, of course, he's suing the Home Office over police protection. He's also suing Mirror Group newspapers over alleged unlawful information gathering, i.e. Uh, alleged phone hacking. The same with the News Group newspapers. So, to summarise, he's at war with the British press and he's at war with um, like be, the Home Office. He'd like office. to be his lawyer, wouldn't he? All I'd be... say he's got too much time on his hands. He needs to go out and start working properly. I mean, what is he doing? A tangled web he does weave. Yeah, I think Prince Harry is, I think, uh, from his, in his own words, is a very damaged individual. I think it does all well, step back. Well, he's damaging everybody else he's now. Damaged he needs himself. to stay quiet. He's damaging himself. But on, on to happier things. Red Nose Day. Yeah, Red Nose Day. Prince William is going to be appearing in a film um, raising the spotlight, or shining a spotlight, I should say, on homelessness and the rise of homelessness because of the cost of living crisis in the United Kingdom. He's speaking to two individuals who have experienced homelessness, um, in, uh, who are part of a charity um, who is supported by Red Nose Day, um, the, the BBC charity uh, initiative. We had a tease in that trailer of what Prince William was going to have to say, but we'll have to wait until tonight um, to hear it exactly what Prince William is discussing with these two individuals. We know from Kensington Palace that uh, Prince Harry is very much, sorry, not Prince Harry, Prince William, um, homelessness is very much going to be a big theme this year for him. He's patron of Centrepoint, um, the passage to um, homelessness charity, something which Princess Diana um, started back in the day. But just a, a, a cheeky comment, I think it was, from Isabel Oakeshott offering to do uh, Prince Andrew's memoirs, if need be. I know he was <laughs> thinking about doing another documentary. Emily Maitlis's didn't go so well, but how about this, a book as well? Yeah, I mean, there are reports that Prince, ha uh, Prince Andrew is writing a memoir or wants to write a memoir, so perhaps Isabel <laughs> Oakeshott would be a good choice. It's not been confirmed by Prince Andrew's team. Just don't give her your WhatsApp messages. No, don't give him WhatsApp messages. But also, the, he's, it's funny you mentioned Emily Maitlis's interview with him, that damning interview of Prince Andrew, which made him step back as a working member of the royal family. Netflix is making the whole the whole um, a ser series of events up until that interview, obtaining the interview into a drama um, starring Keely Hawes, Billy Piper, um, and all the rest of it. So that's, I think it's going to be an uncomfortable year for Prince Andrew. But he, says he, want, he does say he wants to do another interview, doesn't he? Well, allegedly, yes, uh, reportedly well, he does. It's if, not if you confirmed. were his uh, advisor, Cameron, would you say no more interviews? I mean, it's not for me to comment. I don't, th I don't think that's... All right, well, I'm, if not, yeah. I'm going to ask uh, Daniel, would you say, Prince Andrew, no more interviews? Yeah, generally, I think he needs to develop... I mean, he'd be happier in life if he developed other skills. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or some skills, rather, perhaps. I think he should step back, actually. But Andrew Lowney's writing a biography on Prince Andrew, and he does real revelation. He did the Mount Battens and he's done, done others as well. So Andrew Lowney's currently writing a book mm. on it. That will be explosive.
Mm. Very interesting. Well, you, Cameron, you're in a job for a lot, lot yeah. longer. There's yeah. lots yeah. more coming down that road there.